Now we've been talking about ordinary generating functions for a little while. And let's recall two examples of these. So one of the simplest ways is if we take the sequence of all ones, okay? If we want to apply the ordinary generating function to the sequence, it's something that we've seen before. This is just one plus x plus x squared and so on which has a nice closed form of one over one minus x. We saw, we made use of a generalization of that in the partition generating function. Another series that's very nice that we manipulated in this way was uh, binomial coefficients, n choose zero, n choose one, n choose two, and so on. And of course, this has the formula n choose zero plus n choose one x plus n choose two x squared and so on. And there's a nice closed form for this given to us by the binomial theorem of one plus x to the n. These are all very good and useful things. And we've seen that we can use closed forms for generating functions to derive interesting formulas um, for different sequences of numbers. Let's look at another sequence of numbers. Let's take something that's very combinatorial, the number of partitions of n. So there are zero factorial, which is one partition of, I'm sorry, permutation of zero, and then one factorial, two factorial, and so on. And this series grows incredibly fast. So we're going to get one plus x plus x squared times two plus six x cubed plus 24 x to the fourth, and it grows too fast. So what do I mean by too fast? There's not a closed formula for the generating function because the numbers in factorial grow too fast. So what we're going to do, we still want to be able to use generating function technology in order to analyze things that grow like permutations. And the way that we're going to do it is by taking a different kind of generating function. What we're going to take in this particular case is the generating function that's going to be exponential. So here you can see that the difference is not in the coefficients, but in how I scale the variable. I'm going to divide by n factorial to slow down the growth of the sequence of numbers a n. Let's take a few examples. Let's take the same example we took before to start, which was all ones. What happens if we take the constant sequence? And now we're taking the exponential generating function for it. Well, now what we get is 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 plus x cubed over six, and so on. And of course, we have a closed form for this series. This is just the power series for e to the x. So the constant term is now going to give us the exponential, and that's where we get the term exponential generating function. That's really where it comes from. Let's do another example. Let's revisit the example we had before, counting the number of permutations. So we have zero factorial, one factorial, two factorial, and so on. And when we take the exponential generating function for the series, now what do we get? We get 1 plus x plus 2 factorial x squared over 2 factorial. And in fact, we're always going to have the coefficients canceling out with the rescaling, which was sort of the point. And so this becomes 1 over 1 minus x. This is just the series 1 plus x plus x squared. So as an exponential generating function, the number of permutations has this nice closed form. Let's do another Here's example. Here's what I found. I'll stop Siri. Here's another example. Um, let's see if we can derive a formula for dn, which is the number of permutations of n with no fixed points. So these are the derangements, right? So this is the number of derangements of n. So permutations with no fixed points. We saw before that uh, when we did an analysis of this using inclusion-exclusion, we saw about one-third of permutations are derangements. So they grow rather much like permutations. We definitely want to use the exponential generating function. But before we do that, we want to think about how can we relate derangements with regular permutations. And that's going to be the key to helping us come up with a formula for the exponential generating function d of x, which is the sum over all n of dn x to the n over n factorial. So let's think for a second how we can decompose derangements. So if you take any permutation w, so w is a permutation of n um, that fixes exactly s, which is some subset of n, then we can think of W is the identity 
on S and deranges N minus S. So we can think of taking any permutation that we have and we can decompose it into the identity and a derangement. If we use that idea, now the set S, it doesn't really matter what the numbers are that we're permuting, deranging, or whatnot, or fixing, right? It just matters how many there are. And when we take the generating function into account, that's sort of doing everything for all n at once. So what we get is a generating function identity here. So we're going to have derangements as one term. We are going to comp be composing those with the identity, which is e to the x. So this is for the identity on s. We get the derangements. So this is derange n minus s. And what does that give us? Well, that gives us all permutations. So all permutations of n. So we get this lovely form for a product on the generating function. And this is exactly what's going to allow us to come up with a formula for the derangements, because we can just solve this equation for the derangements. So let's do that. What do I get? I get d of x is equal to e to the minus x, that's what happens when I divide by e to the x, times 1 over 1 minus x. So let's just expand this out. We know what the series are, and even if we didn't, they're written right over there. So this is the sum, n greater than or equal to 0, of, well, we have minus 1 to the n, x to the n over n factorial. I've just taken this minus x, and I've factored out the minus 1. So that comes from the e. And the 1 over x gives us the sum n greater than or equal to 0 of x to the n. Okay, we can multiply that out um, just using the product formula. So what is the product going to be? So remember that when I, I multiply it out, I kind of want to group my terms together based on degree. So for e to the x, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take minus 1 to the k, x to the k over k factorial. And of course, this is any possible k from 0 to n. And then what am I going to take from the other term? Yeah. From the other term, I'm just taking x to the n minus k. This will then allow me to combine the x to the k and x to the n minus k. So what I've got here is my coefficients for x to the n. So this is equal to the sum n greater than or equal to 0 of what? Of the sum from k equals 0 to n of minus 1 to the k 1 over k factorial x to the n. So is this a formula for derangements? Well, not quite. Because remember, the derangements, we want the exponential generating function. And this is an ordinary generating function. So now we're just going to use a basic trick. How do we convert an ordinary generating function into an exponential one? We just divide by n factorial. So if we're going to divide this by n factorial, we need to multiply by n factorial on the n side. So let's do that. We're going to get the sum n greater than or equal to 0 of n factorial times the sum from k equals 0 to n of minus 1 to the k over k factorial. And on the outside, I now have x to the n over n factorial. And now this is now an exponential generating function, so this is the formula for the number of derangements. And we can see that this exactly agrees with the formula that we got last time using the method of inclusion-exclusion. Now, we've derived the same formula using generating functions, which is a little bit of combinatorics that tells us how to decompose a permutation into a derangement and the identity.